From the food we eat, the air we breathe, the land we dwell, to the health of our body and mind and the well-being of all things in the universe. Unlock the science with Chula Radio Plus. It is not up for debate. The importance of trees to the earth and its dwellers, from their contributions to the environment, to their benefit to human lives, by sustaining itself via the means of photosynthesis, the process in which trees absorb carbon dioxide from the surrounding air and transform it into oxygen. Not only do trees mitigate the effect of climate change. It also acts as a soil preservation and air filtration, and in the age where climate change has increasingly put the world in jeopardy, people are now starting to realize the importance of trees and forests more than ever. Hello, I'm l a w a n j i r a s u r a d e v and today, Unlock the Science will take you to digging underground to see how fungi and mushrooms can help us to grow more trees. Southeast Asia was previously known for being one of the largest area on Earth, as it was home to almost 20% of the world's forest cover. It is estimated that the region has lost more than 50% of its original forest area, due to factors such as illegal loggings, forest land conversion to agriculture to serve the rising population. As for Thailand. It is estimated that decades of economic growth and expansion has depleted forest cover of the country to be only around 30% of the country's total land area currently. One of the most harmful acts in deforestation is burning trees and bushes, a common practice in Thailand and neighboring countries. Farmers would burn the fields to get rid of previous plantations, weeds, and pests to prepare the land for new crops. However, what most of them are not aware of is that constant burning can harm soil fertility and slow down the growth of new seedlings by destroying organic matter like carbon and nitrogen, including the underground network known as the wood wide web. Much like the internet, which allows people to connect and share information and data across the globe, only in this case, it is between plants in the forest, which share nutrients and alert dangers among themselves, thus essentially increase the survivability rate and enhance its growth. This wood wide web, or in technical term, the mycorrhizal network. Consists of multiple fungi called mycorrhizal fungi, an underground fungus that creates a mutual symbiotic relationship between itself and the roots of its host plant. It is a relationship that can be found in nature, having occurred in almost 80% of all plants. Dr. Jitra p i a p u k i o who teaches at Department of Botany. Faculty of Science, j u l a l o n g k o n University, is a mycologist. She explains that mycorrhiza comes from two words. Mycor is the word for fungus, and rhiza means root. Therefore, mycorrhiza means two ways benefits between fungus and plant roots. The fungus gets carbon in the form of sugar. Another important organic substance from the trees to grow and survive. On the other hand, the fungus helps the tree taking up water and minerals such as phosphorus and nitrogen. It also protects the tree roots from soil pathogens and helps plants to endure drought. There are two types of mycorrhizal fungi: endomycorrhiza and ectomycorrhiza. Endomycorrhiza is a commonly used as organic fertilizer in agriculture, whereas ectomycorrhiza is used to enhance growth in wood trees. Ectomycorrhiza is a rare type, and there is not much of it in the network, 
But the plus is, it creates much rooms as a reproductive organ. Many of their edible mushrooms fetch high price in the market. However, certain mushrooms will grow in certain host trees. Take the gastronomic mushroom truffle as an example. The pricey truffles grow well below grounds of oak trees. The technique of using mycorrhiza for reforestation purpose has been successfully adopted in some Southeast Asian countries, such as Malaysia and Indonesia. It is also being applied in the lumber industry in Nordic countries, like Sweden and Finland, where mycorrhiza has been considered as an official method widely used to aid the growth of their pines. However, the Thai government has yet to endorse the use of mycorrhiza in its forestry. Still, Dr. Chitra, the mycologist at Chulalongkorn University, has been studying the use of mycorrhiza fungi with different local trees for almost 20 years. In 2020, Dr. Chitra finished a joint three-year study of using mycorrhiza fungi to enhance reforestation with native tree species in Thailand. The project, funded by the Mushroom Initiative, a non-governmental organization based in Hong Kong, aims to demonstrate that these fungi could be a good solution for reforestation. In the project, Dr. Jitra and other botanists from other universities in Thailand, together with non-government officials, led the activities of replanting in barren land and degraded forests in 10 provinces, mostly in northeastern and southern regions of Thailand. Dr. Jitra says a key factor in her study has always been forging partnership with local communities. She believes that the success of reforestation lies in all things local, local community, local tree species, local organisms like ectomycorrhiza and mushrooms. To learn more about her work, Unlock the Science reporter Patit Lada Wai Wong talks to Dr. Chitra Pia Pu Kiao, the mycology expert of Chulalongkorn University. So I've been following your research for some time, and I noticed you have been promoting the use of mycorrhiza fungi to help speed up reforestation. Is there a reason you use these particular fungi? One of the key requirements for the forest tree to grow is the ability to absorb the limited nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and also the water from soil. As the level of the bio available in organic nutrients in the forest soils are often too low for the plants to grow, most of the tea rely on mycorrhiza to gain more nutrition. That's why I should mycorrhiza fungi to help speed up reforestation. Interesting. And if I'm not wrong, there are two types of mycorrhiza. Why do you choose to use ectomycorrhizal fungi, which is considered to be more rare than the other type? Yeah. Uh, I choose the ectomycorrhizal fungi, even though it is very rare compared to the endomycorrhiza, because most of the ectomycorrhizal fungi can produce edible mushrooms and have a high economic value. There are white mushrooms, such as barometer earth star, or high people know well, head pop. By giving the people this benefits, it's easier for people to be interested in reforestation and afforestation. All oh, right, I've heard of Barometer Earth Star or Head Pop before, but I've never tried it though. I only know that they sell for a very high price. And I wonder, since there are many types of mushroom in the world, are there certain types of trees that react better with ectomycorrhizal fungi than the other? Oh, yes, of course. 
ectomycorrhizal are specifically associated with certain tree species like a pine, oak, eucalyptus, and dipterocarpus, such as dipterocarpus species in Thai name Yang Na, Yang Hiang, Yang Puang. Soria species in Thai is Teng Lang Puyom, Hopia, Takian, and so on, which are plenty in the area we shoot. All right, for our audience listening in, so what Dr. Titra has said is the list of Thai tree species under the tropical dipterocarp family. Since this family consists mostly of hardwood, you might have heard about them in the construction industry before. And speaking of tropical, seeing that you have enlisted communities from different provinces, is region or climate a factor too? Yes, because different places make a different forest. For example, the northeastern regions have a lot of deciduous forests, while the south has a more of a tropical lens forest. However, after the research started, we found a very interesting way people think in the different religion. The people in the northeastern part tend to focus more about the mushroom, while the people in the south care more about the forest. This may be the result of the way of living in different regions. Oh, I've never heard about that before. And would you say some places perform better than the others? The South performs better in the term of the research results. We have the better tree growth, better soil, and so on. Why the not each region did so well in the communities? The people were more interested in what we did and want to be a part of the research. This may be because the people in the not each past rely more on the forest. If you don't mind, could you tell us some of the issues you faced during the project and how did you overcome them? Some issues we faced were doubt and weed caused by the climate change that affect our ceilings at the edge between one and two years. We need to take care of our ceilings for about two years after planting, removing weeds and covering them from the intense heat from the sun. After two years passed, the tree was strong enough to grow on their own. Huh, so if not taken care of, drought and weed are the primary killers of these early seedlings. And did the villager give you any kinds of suggestion at all? Uh, the villagers provide us with questions that we need to answer in a way that benefit them and still get the list out that we aim to proceed, which is reforestation. And can you share with us some of the questions they gave you? For example, how long will it take for them to get the mushrooms? We have to come back and do the research to answer such a question. So apart from your project, are there similar reforestation projects using the same method and how successful are they? Uh, there are a lot of successful projects in other countries. But in Thailand, this project or research are done mostly in a lab or in a university area. We one of the first group that take this to the communities. We will return after a short break. You are listening to Unlock the Science on Chula Radio Plus. The project of applying mycorrhizal fungi to replant barren land and degraded forest in the 10 provinces in Thailand was seen as a success. With more than 80% of plant survival rate and enthusiastic participation from local people. In one workshop, targeting only 30 people, more than 100 villagers showed up as they all were drawn into it by the mushroom element of the project, 
a byproduct they can eat and sell. Thailand has been trying to raise its forest area to 40% of total land area from the current 30% for many decades. Despite all the effort that have been taken to promote reforestation and prevent deforestation, forest area has not increased in significant amount. Dr. Jitra believes that the main reason lies in the fact that local communities have not been allowed to live sustainably with the forest as they have not been regarded as a key stakeholder party in the process. Her advisors are restoring deteriorated forests with local fast-growing trees with participation from local people. Fast-growing trees are wanted because local people need to sell them for income and then replanting the next crop. Using ectomycorrhizal fungi will help speed up the growth of the trees as well as providing edible and sellable mushrooms. The Earth Star Mushroom is considered as value valuable in the northern region of Thailand. It is a main ingredient of local food there, fetching around 12 to 30 US dollars per kilogram. Will this technique of using mycorrhizal fungi be implemented in a much larger scale or even national level? Unlock the Science Reporter, Patit Lada Wai Wong, finds out more from Dr. Jitra Pia Pu Kiao. And as you mentioned the importance of locals' involvement, do you think the incentive works? Oh, it's worked really well. As we see the number of participants increase every year, especially in the northeastern regions. We also saw the the increasing number of the people in the south, even though not as much as the northeastern regions. Yeah, true. These edible mushrooms are a delicacy in the north where they fetch good prices. Is mushroom still a good incentive for community reforestation in other regions, like in the south? Oh, yes. The price is very high as we can find this mushroom once a year. I guess, as I mentioned, the people in the northeastern part tend to focus more about the mushroom. There are other species of the mushroom in other regions that equally in price or lower that grow locally with the local trees. So yes, the mushroom is still a good incentive, but not as much as the northeastern part. Hmm, seeing how successful the project is, why hasn't Thailand applied this method yet? Is it because of the cost or the know-how? Uh, the main lesson that Thailand hasn't applied this method is we cannot effectively communicate with the locals. We proved that this method is effective since 2005. The government didn't do a good enough job to spread this knowledge to the people. Only the researchers do not have enough power to fully communicate with the locals. Have you made any proposal to the government or any policy makers yet? Oh, yes, I have a proposal to the government about the growing the local tea species in, is very important for reforestation and the use of mycorrhiza to speed up the reforestation process to fight the climate change problem. After hearing you say this, I agree that it's very important. So do you have any future projects or collaborations in mind? Oh, yes. Our next project is about using this mycorrhiza to reforest the affected Wi-Fi area to reduce PM2.5. Collaborating with the Mapping National Park, Anantamahidon Scholarship Alumni Club, and financial support from National Research Council of Thailand. Could you tell us more about the mapping project and how it reduces PM2.5? 
the 400 tribe is in mapping national park that the locals invest were seized by the authority to be reforested. The locals were burning the forest as they believed that burning the tree down will make mushroom grow more. The forest mm. burning creates so much PM2.5. And also this time, the fungi that help the tree to grow. So I think educating the locals about the truth of the mycorrhizal fungi life cycle will help to stop burning. Now let us sum up this interview with the final question. Do you think replanting local trees with mycorrhizal fungi is the solution for the community reforestation in Thailand? And will it be used at a national level at some point? Oh, yes, I truly think that uh, this is the solution or the answer for local and even national reforestation. In the national strategy started that we need to increase the forest area from 25% to more than 40% of country in 20 years. In the past, Dr. Jitra's proposition might not be practical due to the fact that the law then prohibited the planting and monetary exploitation of certain restricted high-value trees, such as teak, for instance. Some of the trees recommended to be planted under this mycorrhizal fungus plus mushroom scheme were prohibited under the previous law. However, a recently enacted new law has opened opportunities for villagers to make a living from trees they grow in their land. The Community Forest Act, coming into force in May 2019, now recognizes local communities' rights to use and manage their forests and forest resources outside protected forest areas. By 2025, Thailand's Forestry Department plans to classify 1.6 million hectares of reserved forest as community forest, incorporating 15,000 locality as community forest under this new law, according to the Regional Community Forestry Training Center for Asia and the Pacific, whose regional hub is based in Bangkok. Nevertheless, Dr. Jitra reminds that native tree species and participation by local communities need to be taken into account to enable reforestation to work. And when they do, the overall forest area could reach the 40% mark in no time. She believes that success will come as every party plays its role in the process of afforestation and forest development. Unlock the Science would like to express our appreciation to Assistant Professor Dr. Jitra Piyapu Kyo of Department of Botany, Faculty of Science, Jilalongkorn University, for keeping Thailand green. I hope you enjoy our program. You can listen to Unlock the Science on Jula Radio Plus at FM 101.5 every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can also listen and follow us on our website, curadio.jula.ac.th, and our Facebook page. And our program is also available as podcast. See you again next Saturday. Have a nice day. Unlock the Science is edited and produced by Sinfa Tunsorawood with Lawan Jirasurade as the program host and co-producer. 